In today's video, we're going to be having a look at how we can integrate Alexa into our Home Assistant to allow us to make use of features such as text-to-speech, the media player, and running Home Assistant scripts with our voice. Check it out. What is going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. First things first, I am going to be saying the word Alexa a lot, so if your Echo is in the same room as you, you want to make sure that's on mute. For this tutorial, there's going to be a few things that we need. First of all, we're going to obviously need an Amazon Echo device. Now you can use any device in the Echo range. So this covers all of the different Echo speakers, but it also covers things like the Amazon Fire TV or anything that has the Alexa ability. So you're signed into your Amazon account and you can physically talk to that device. So if you have the device and it's registered to your Amazon account, you should be able to access it with this tutorial. Next up, we're going to need to make sure our Amazon account is two-factor authenticated. Now, if it's not or you have no idea how to do this, I'll leave a link in the description below. So go ahead and follow that and set your account up with two-factor authentication. We're also going to need hacks installed in our Home Assistant. Now, again, if you've got no idea what this is or how to do it, I'll have a handy video that I've created linked in this video and also in the description. So go ahead and check that video out and then come back to this one. And the last thing we're going to need to do is press that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you ding dong the notification bell, you'll be alerted to any future videos I do. If you've got all of those things, let's carry on with this tutorial. OK, we're back here on our demo dashboard. The first thing we're going to need to do is open up hacks. So I'm going to open hacks here in the sidebar. Then we're going to head into integrations. I'm going to click the plus in the bottom right corner here. So I'm going to press on that and we're going to do a search for the Alexa media player. Now I can see it in the top of the list here, so I'm just going to press it. If it's not there in your list, just do a little search for Alexa media player. And once that's opened up, we're going to just hit on install this repository in Hacks. At the time of recording this, the, the most recent version is 3.8.5 and I'm just going to hit install on that. Once that's done, if we just scroll down to the bottom, we should see our new Alexa media player integration. So I can see that there and it's telling us it's pending a restart. So if we just choose hacks, again, we can see that restart. And if we just click on that, it's going to jump us into the configuration. And we're just going to hit restart in the server management. OK, once our home assistant's restarted, we're going to press configuration again. And we're going to jump into integrations. We're then just going to hit that plus in the bottom right again. And we're going to do a search for the Alexa media player. And we're going to just press on that. This might take a couple of minutes for it to actually load the integration. And when it has loaded, we're going to get a configuration page like this. So we're going to need to enter our email address and our password. So go ahead and enter your details there. The other thing you're going to need to update is your Amazon region. So I'm in the UK, so mine's going to be .co.uk. But if you're in the US or anything like that, you'll need to change your Amazon domain to match where your account is registered to. There are a few other extra things you can do with this configuration. I'm just going to keep it basic. So you can do things like include only set devices or you can exclude certain devices. I'll have a link for this integration in the description below so you can go and read the documentation if you're interested in some more advanced configuration. But as I said, we're keeping it basic. So email, password and update your region. We're then just going to press on submit. Pressing submit should take us to the Amazon two-factor authentication page. And from here, we're going to just need to enter our credentials and press sign in. We're then going to need to enter a capture. And if you're lucky, it will work first time. So enter that and press sign in. If you're stuck on the capture and you constantly enter capture after capture and you know your email and password are both right, I'd recommend you try a different browser. When I first did this, I was using the new version of Microsoft Edge and it just wouldn't get past the capture. I switched over to Google Chrome and it went through straight away. Now, I don't know if this is a browser issue or not, but they are both Chromium, but for whatever reason, it didn't work in Edge. So yeah, if you're stuck, have a go at using a different browser. Once you have made it to this step, it's going to ask us for our two-step verification method. I'm going to choose enter a one-time password from my Authenticator app. So I'm just going to hit send one-time password. That should then redirect us back to Home Assistant. And after a second, the success message should pop up and we should be able to see all of our Echo devices. If you want to, at this point, you can assign these devices to specific areas using the drop-downs. I'm going to leave that for now and just press finish. Once that's finished, we should be able to see our Alexa media player and all of our devices and entities that are associated with our Amazon account. If we then choose devices, it will then take us into a list of all of our available Amazon devices, and we should be able to control these with the integration. Before we start playing around with the fun stuff like the text to speech, we've got one more thing that we're going to need to add, and this is the mini media player, and we're going to get this through hacks again. 
So let's jump back over to hacks. And this time we're going to choose front end and we're going to just click the little blue explore down the bottom. For me, the mini media player is just there at the top. If it's not there for you, just do a search for it using the search bar at the top. So I'm just going to press on that. And from here, we get a little preview of what's capable with the mini media player. So what we're going to be using this for is to allow us to create a little media player and it's going to have this little text to speech option like on this one here. And what that's going to allow us to do is just have that control somewhere on our home assistant dashboard. And when we enter text into that box, our Amazon Echo will say whatever we type in the box. So let's go ahead and click install on that. And at the time of recording this, the latest version is currently 1.12.0 and I'm just going to hit install. Once that's done, it's going to pop up a message telling us it needs to reload the browser cache. So just hit reload there. And if we just scroll down, we can now see the mini media player there. Okay, from here, we're going to just head over to our main dashboard and we're going to add a new card. We're now going to have to create this media player card that we've just added from hacks. So we're going to search for a manual card. And then we're just going to manually enter the card configuration. I'll have this configuration linked in the description below so you can go and copy that and just modify it to fit your echo. So go ahead and paste that in and the parts you're going to want to change are the entity so you're going to need to update the media player to be the name of whatever echo you're using in your house and the same with the entity ID there. And once we've done that we're just going to press save. If you're not sure what your Echo's entity ID is, a simple way to get it is if you just open the Alexa media player integration and go into your device list then you're going to want to find the echo that you want. So in my example, I'm using the kitchen echo. I'm just going to press that. And then from here, I can just click on the kitchen echo and it will tell me what the entity ID is. This will then be the ID that I use on the card on the dashboard. On our dashboard, we've now got this nice little card. And from here, we've got a little volume slider to control the volume of the echo. And there's also a little text input there that we can control what the echo is going to say. There's also some nice little track controls there to control any music that's currently playing. I'm a big fan of this card and there's quite a few different things you can do with it. Again, this is linked in the description below. So if you want to play around with the configurations for the card, then go and check that out. This particular echo is my kitchen echo, but it's currently sat right next to me here. So if I do some text to speech, hopefully you should be able to hear it. So let's go ahead and enter a message here. I'm just going to press send. This is a test. And hopefully if that was loud enough, you should have heard it say that this is a test. So any text that we enter in that box, the Amazon Echo will just say. As this card is also a media player, whenever you play music, it will take on the album art of whatever song's playing. So here as an example, I've got some Arctic Monkeys on and we can see that it's grabbed the album art for that and it's playing. I can also pause and skip the track using the little controls here. So that's the manual way of doing text to speech. But what if we want to use text to speech in an automation? Let's start off by having a look at a demo using the developer tools. So in the sidebar here, we're going to choose developer tools. We're then going to choose services up at the top. And the service that we want is going to be notify dot. And then this is going to be the name of your echo. So if I keep typing here, I'm going to put Alexa. And in that list now, I can see the actual echo I want. So for my example, I'm using my kitchen echo. So I want the notify.alexa underscore media player underscore kitchen underscore echo. Bit of a mouthful. So for you, you'll need to choose whichever echo you're using. A quick tip here, if you've got a few groups, they might also show up in the list. So in my list there, I've also got this media underscore kitchen, but that's a group. So I don't want that. I want the actual echo. So I want the kitchen underscore echo. So if you've got something similar, make sure you've got the echo at the end there. Okay, so we've chosen our echo. We now need to give this service a couple of parameters. So we need to give it a message and this is going to be the actual body of the message. So what we want the actual echo to say. So let's just fill this in. I'm just going to say this is a test again. For the title, we can leave that one blank because we don't need a title for this type of notification. And the data, we need that. And this is where we're going to tell the notification what kind of a type it is. So we're going to enter that. And the type for this one is TTS. And that TTS tells the service that this particular notification is of type text to speech. So when we press call service, it should pick that up and hopefully our echo will say what we've got in that box. So let's go ahead and press that call service. This is a test. So that's working and hopefully you should have heard that. 
the developer tools are great for this kind of thing because we can just quickly test a few different things and get the end result that we want. Now that we've got that working demo, we could easily convert this into an automation. One simple thing to do is you could just click this go to YAML mode. And once we press that, we can actually see the YAML for that type of notification. Before we move on to automation then, I wanna just quickly touch on sequences and sounds. Now, these are things that we can do with the Echo to make our text-to-speech a little bit more interesting. Let's start off with sequences then. So here's a list of different sequences that we can trigger with the Echo. And we can use any of these sequences with the Media Player Play Media service. And using these sequences, we can do things like get Alexa to tell us a story, tell us a joke, tell us what the weather is. You get the idea. Let's have a look at how we do this then. So we're going to be using the developer tools again, just to show off an easy example. And the service that we're going to want to use to do this is the media player, Play Media. Now, there are a few different play options, so make sure you choose the right one. So here we can see media player, play, media player, play, pause. The one that we want is this media player, play media. And then from here, we can either use the GUI or we can use the YAML mode. So I'm going to do it with the GUI and then I'll switch over just to show you the difference. So let's pick our entity and the entity we're going to use again is just my kitchen echo. The next parameter we've got is the content ID and this content ID is going to be the option for the sequence. So let's just say we want Alexa to tell us a joke. We could go with Alexa joke.play. So if we just copy that and then we come back into our content ID, we're just going to paste that in there. And the content type for this particular thing is a sequence. So we're just going to type in sequence there. And that's everything we need. So if we hit call service, we should hopefully get a joke. There are two fish in a tank. One says to the other, how do you drive this thing? Nice. <laughs> so that's how you call a sequence with the GUI. And again, you can just hot swap these out. So if you didn't want joke and you wanted one of the other sequences, you can just come in here and just pick whichever one you want. And if we jump over to the YAML mode, we can see what that would look like in YAML. And again, we could take this straight from here and turn that into an automation. Next up then we've got sounds and you can probably guess what this one's going to do. So here's a list of different sounds and we can choose one from here. I'm just going to grab this doorbell one here. I'm going to hop back into our developer tools page and the content ID is going to be the sound that I've just copied. So I'm going to paste that in there. And this time we're not using sequences, we're using sound. So all we need to do here is just change this sequence to be sound. And we're going to target the kitchen echo again, and we're just going to hit call service. That one was quite quiet, but you might have been able to hear that, and it was just a little doorbell sound effect. And if we just have a look at the YAML mode again, that would be the YAML that we could again turn into an automation. So that was a quick look at sequences and sound. Now there are a ton of different things that you can do with the custom Alexa component. You can do things like trigger specific songs to play on the Echo, you can launch Echo skills, you can launch Echo routines, and you can do things like actionable notifications. So this will be where Alexa will ask you something and then you can give Alexa an answer like yes or no, and based on whatever answer you give, she'll go and do something. I'm not gonna be covering those things in this video, but I will be covering them in a future video. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you ding dong the notification bell, you'll be alerted to whenever I bring a video out. Alexa uses the speech synthesis markup language or SSML for short. And by using this markup language, you can add effects to the voice that Alexa uses. So I'll show you a very quick demo of this now. To do this, we'll use the notify service again. So we're gonna use notify and then the name of our echo again. So I'm going with the kitchen echo again. Just like our other notification, then we're gonna add a message as a parameter. But this time the message is gonna be surrounded by their SSML markup. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And this will be in the description below. So feel free to go and grab this. Looking at this then, we can see that our message is, this is a whispered notification. And we can see that it's surrounded by this markup. And what this is doing is just telling Alexa what effect needs to be used when she speaks. So we can see here we're using an Amazon effect called Whispered. We then also need to add data, but as the type this time, we're not going to be using text to speech. We're going to be using two different ones. We're going to be using announce and we're also going to be adding the method of speak. And then let's just give that a go by pressing call service. This is a 
And that's a quick look at some of the things that are possible with SSML. Now, I will be covering this along with those other topics that I mentioned in a future video. But what we're going to do now is have a look at how we can take what we've learned and turn it into an automation. OK, so let's say you've been playing around with the developer tools and you've created a notification for one of your echoes and you want to turn that into an automation. What do we do? In the latest version of Home Assistant, they've streamlined the user interface. So this actual service call and the setup of it is now the same across all the different parts of Home Assistant where you can access the services. And this just simplifies life for us because we now know how to create a notification and we know what parameters we need. So we can just copy this straight across to an automation and I'll show you how to do that now. So we're going to go into configuration and then we're going to head straight into automations. And we're going to add a new automation here. So the blue button in the corner, we're just going to press on that. And we're just going to say start with an empty automation. And then let's go ahead and fill this automation in. So we'll give it a name and a description. We'll leave the mode as the default one. Let's set a trigger then to kick off our automation. So we'll keep it nice and simple and we're going to set the trigger type to just be sun and we'll go with sunrise. And we're then going to want to add an action for the sunrise. So the action we're going to use is call service. And the service that we're going to use is the notify service that we've been using um, to actually get the TTS to work. So we're going to use notify and we're going to use the echo that we've been targeting. So my one is the kitchen echo. And you can now see that we're presented with a familiar screen that we've been using throughout the video. So we've got a message, a title and data. So again, we're going to set the message and the data. So the message is going to be the message that we want the echo to say and the data is going to be the type TTS. And that's basically it. You can see how the screens are the same. So if you've managed to get something working in the developer tools, it's very easy to just transfer it over. So we could press save there. And then when our triggers fired, this service should be called. Now that's a super basic use for the automation, but they can get more complicated. Here's another example. And in this example, I'm using the zone trigger. And what this is doing is when a person is detected as being home, the notify service is being called and the echo is announcing that that particular person is home. Again, that one's not super complicated, but the power of this comes when you start combining it with other automations and other services. A good example of this is Room Assistant. Now, if you're not sure what Room Assistant is, I've done a couple of videos on that and I've got a few more planned. So go ahead and check that out. But one that I use with Room Assistant is the day before bin day at about 7 p.m. If Room Assistant detects I'm in a room, the echo will ask me if I've taken the bins out. And this is just a nice little reminder then to, you know, take the bins out. You can also make use of sequences and sounds that we had a look at earlier on in the video. A good example of incorporating these is you could use something like a motion sensor and when that motion sensor detects motion, it could play an alarm sound or it could run a specific sequence. Have a play around and let me know any cool things you plan to make in the comments below. The last thing I'm going to touch on then is calling scripts using Alexa. And what this is going to allow you to do is you're going to be able to use your voice to trigger a script and have Home Assistant do something. In this particular example, I'm able to get the temperature of my Raspberry Pi and have Alexa announce the temperature using the text to speech. So in order to make use of this, your Home Assistant needs to be accessible externally from your network, either by using Nabucasa or another method. I'm not going to be going into details on how to do all of those things, but the idea of this was just to give you an idea of what's possible. So if you have those things set up, you can expose this script to Alexa and Alexa will then just see this as a scene. You can then combine this with an Alexa routine. So in my case, I'm using a command to say, what's the temperature of Home Assistant? And when I say that, it causes Alexa to call the script, which in turn triggers the text to speech, which announces the Pi's temperature. In a future video, I will be going into more detail about scripts, skills, actionable notifications, routines, and play music. To summarize then, we've had a look at how we can set up the Alexa custom component and also the mini media card. We've then had a look at how you can use text-to-speech and some of the text-to-speech options like the sequences, sounds, and the effects. Then we had a brief look at how you could make automations using the text-to-speech and a couple of different examples for that. And that's all for today. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, then hit that subscribe button. I will be back with more Alexa videos going through some of the topics that I've spoken about today. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.
Alexa uses the speech synthesis. This particular echo is my...